While England is its lockdown this week, it's only one of many European countries wrestling with the same question. Is it safe to do so? Most of you will have to have to adjust to new forms of working in recent weeks, but some perhaps a little more than others. We want to know how is the hospitality industry doing to adapt and adjust to new forms of working rules. Good evening, viewers. Uh, good evening, panels. I've got with me Dr. Oli Tosaruddin, MBE, President European Bangladesh Federation of Commerce and Industry. And I've got with me Mr. Aminul Choudhury. He's from a uh, hall, a restaurant called Crooked Square, winner of the most innovative restaurant in England 2019. Good evening, uh, gentlemen. Good evening. Asalaamu Alaikum, Ali Bhai. How are you? Oh, fine. How? Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Aminul Bhai, fine. Good, good eat in your home. And yes, yes, we, we all had a very good Eid, Alhamdulillah. Uh, how is life keeping you uh, in this uh, current situation? Life is uh, better than before because when I was working heavily, I don't know how I'm working because scattered all over the world. And uh, after the Corona blessing come, so I am sitting home and working many places, uh, enjoying with grandchildren, families and uh, Whatever I do, prayers, Almighty Allah's. So everything uh, looks like uh, it's a blessing from Allah has come to Corona. That's right. That's right, yes. Uh, Aminul Bhai, how, how was your Eid? It was really good. Uh, in fact, I was actually working on Eid day, but nonetheless, day after, you know, I, I got to really enjoy myself with my family. So it was great. Sure, sure. We actually, um, I mean, coronavirus, as uh, um, Oliver said, that it has brought us uh, uh, actually a blessing in disguise in many ways, many forms. We have in enjoyed uh, the last eight to nine weeks with families, you know, the people that we never spoke to, we have spoken to because we had the time and everything. Otherwise, we're busy like everybody else. Anyhow, uh, life is slowly getting to normality. And yes, we have to, Oliver, you have to go back to work very soon. <laughs> um, so we want to talk. We want to discuss about uh, the uh, how uh, are we? Obviously, uh, as you know, from first of June, the lot of people has gone back to work, the office wise, and that's why they're adapting to the new way of uh, life in the workplace. Uh, this is our main topic today: um, uh, how we're going to adapt to a new life after COVID nineteen. Um, I want to uh, watch a, a video actually, it's, it's a small video done by Aminul Choudhury, how he's going to, uh, his restaurant will be transformed uh, to adopt new rules. Um, we will go to the video uh, very shortly. I'll start with you actually uh, and to ask you about uh, the video that you have done. This is something that you will be uh, uh, portraying and you'll be doing it uh, in your restaurant to adjust uh, uh, to the new laws by the government. I believe. Absolutely. I mean, I'm quite fortunate, you know, I've got a restaurant that's, uh, you know, all the tables are almost uh, screwed onto the floor and it's sectionized and uh, I've got six sections. So, you know, it's great. I don't really need to do much. Uh, I could just put a screen to give exclusive use of each areas and each uh -huh. section. Uh, so for me, you know, I'm blessed, really. And plus, my food concept is very easy. So uh, it's, uh, you know, I'll go into that later. But yeah, so it's, it's Let the restaurant, it's, it, it, it would fulfill um, the requirement, I think. Yeah. Mm. You know, we've done, we've, we've talked about it and we've, you know, looked at the risks that are involved and that we have to overcome. Um, and anyway, I think let's, it takes uh, a lot of let's watch the video and it will be easy to explain uh, on this one. Uh, before we go to the video, uh, I want to ask um, Oliver, uh, uh, you, you already told me that Oliver, the, the life, I mean, obviously the life at home is very good and everything, but um, w how are you finding it that uh, we should, we will go back to the work very soon? Our working life and everything. How are you taking this in? Then, oh, we have to go back to work. No, I think uh, I'm uh, this is not the same. As are, you, are you ready to go back to work? Uh, yes, yes, but not for work. We, because we have to be find out something different, not like before what we have been, you know, like 
used to it now we have to find a new this is another world now you can see uh, we have to be precaution about how you are moving how you are handling yourself how you handling your staff how you are handling your customers i'm sure. talking not only restaurant industry i'm talking all other areas so you have to find out everything in uh, such a way that you have to be, uh, bring everybody together but you have to follow all the rule and regulation that uh, what is the uh, our uh, problem in corona virus uh, still is not any solution come yet you know sure. only solution is uh, isolated yourself or distance yourself cleanliness tidiness and all of the other things and you have to always have to be uh, disciplined you know you cannot compromise if you are even friend come your customer come <clears throat> always have to be uh, like you are managing you have to be always uh, uh, tell them this is, this is the way we have to be uh, compromise you know we cannot compromise like other we were hello my friend shake hands and other things uh, so and also your staff have to be trained and continuous even they knows what is going on but still you have to uh, if you are manage you have to be watch all the time you have to be direct all the time you know what we are going to do what is next step or Uh, customer relationship or customer come or staff come uh, other problem would be the like you know you have a lot, i'm talking the restaurant industry uh, not take away that will be other problem that how you attract the outsider like tourist it will be very difficult to bring the tourist you know uh, you have uh, like my restaurant called bitania spice 100 200 covers so i'm fortunate enough like uh, other uh, person says but still that uh, your uh, costing will be higher uh, you cannot charge extra uh, you know because everybody have tight you know situation uh, so you have to your budget have to be properly managed you know even the government has uh, helped you know in the industry but mm-hmm. you make sure that you cannot invest you know which one is not necessary every money you have to keep tight you know every time you cannot talk about the profit at least you survive This is the time of survival. Sure, sure. So you um, must survive. Um, Oliver, thank you. Um, we're gonna. Um, the video is ready now, so we're just gonna go and see the video of uh, uh, Mr. Aminul Choudhury how he's gonna uh, convert his restaurant to adapt to the current law. Welcome to uh, to Kiskua. I'm gonna take you on a little tour just to show you when uh, when the lockdown is lifted and we're we're allowed to reopen. Uh, what we have in plan. So come along. Starting with Rickshaw. We can't give you a lift home, but nevertheless, uh, it's here for you in the future. It all starts here, actually, uh, the menu. Um, the menu will be reduced, and you'll be a taster menu. And then, as you enter into the restaurant, uh, you will have, we will have a desk here whereby we can then guide you, we stop you here basically, and guide you to the right sections. We have many different sections, so we are planning to screen this off here, and that becomes one section. You can, you can basically add a piece of wood which joins with that to make it into a table of eight, and this becomes another section. So following from here, if you'd like to come through, usually from all the way from here, to all the way here is our salad bar but we won't be operating salad bar what we're going to do is bring you lots of different salad on your table and then we have a table of 10 here so we're not going to use this table we're going to screen it off here so people can't get a, get into the people that are dining here so from here we aim to again screen it off here so you can come through that way but the people down in here can't can't get in there and we hope to just use two tables one here one over there and one there now the way we're going to do this we're going to bring food and we're going to bring it on a tray and we're going to have a stand and then we're going to ask the customers if they would like us to put it onto their table or if they feel comfortable taking it themselves Once they finish their meal, they're going to put their plates on there if they don't want uh, waiters going to their table. Same with the drinks. When we bring the drinks, we have a stand, we pull it, we put it onto the stand, 
and then basically either customers can serve themselves or we can serve them. Ideally, we're going to have two people working. One over there, one here. So one guy looking after all these, one guy looking after the front section and one person pulling out the food. So that's downstairs sorted. Uh, one person will be in the bar, they won't get out. Ideally what we want is one person dealing with that customer of their section for the whole evening. So if you come upstairs, we have a room called Playground. It's, uh, we've done it for family people really. Uh, we have a beautiful table of 10 here, it's exclusive use. You see, our food is very easy. We will be carrying it here, putting it here, and then telling the customer to grab it, put it in there. And this then rotates. And the plates would be here, so they take, and then we will bring a tray of little pots with like a tapas kind of side orders and various other things, like salad. Now if you come this way, The idea here was to create a, you know, like a, like a floating tables and swinging uh, seats and stuff. Now this is more for a family and, you know, we, we did it because the floor was a bit uneven as well. So we went from the top, came down, and now everything is uh, smooth. But there's a lot of space here. So again, we could screen this off here and people can, you know, one can sit over there and one can sit here. Again, you can screen this bit off uh, and that could be two, you know, a family of eight or six or even ten. So these are the sections that we have, but we want to give exclusive use, say, for example, we're heavily advertising at the moment for people who missed birthday parties because of COVID-19 and lockdown. So. Now what we're saying is, you know, we will treat their birthday person and they can have an exclusive use, uh, you know, of, of, of their family. If they had a large family and they wanted one section, that's theirs. Uh, I'm going to take you into the kitchen because the kitchen is where it, it becomes, you know, kitchen is where the engine of the boat really. So we're going to show you how we've organized our kitchen and how good it is and the way it efficiently operates. Uh, you know, during this difficult time because we, we are the busiest takeaway uh, with the curry kit at the moment, probably uh, in Yorkshire. Uh, that's how busy we are. So, uh, but that happens at daytime and the way we do it, it's really cool the way we organize it and the way we, uh, the way we operate. And now I'm going to take you into the kitchen. I'm going to pause you for a bit and uh, take you through the gap. And uh, so do you want to... We have, we are quite fortunate. Uh, we have a section on the other side where all the food comes in, uh, raw goods comes in, goes into the fridge on the other side of the wall. And from there, we bring things in. Now, we bring things in here, what's gonna get chopped up? You know, like for example, uh, uh, we've got beef and things like this. So at daytime, this is where all the raw meat gets cut. And after it's cut, it's sanitized and everything. After that, that's where the curry kit gets made, you know. Um, and the curry kit get, gets made and it's, it's put in here. And the cooking area is really here. Um, it's quite, it's, it's a two-man operation we do in the evening because uh, all the prep gets done and it's quite a streamlined uh, uh, operation. We have a, a grill here, as you can see, that does like a 50 kebabs in one go in, with the skewers. Uh, and the skewer holders is usually there. We, we put it on here, hanging, and the waiter who is, you know, using the bain marie for a few uh, peppercorn sauce and uh, various other things, uh, he tends to take it from there and from here, you know, the exit route is that way. Now there is a person who is also standing here. He does his cooking and all his stuff is stored here. So he's done the bulk cooking to put into the main Murray uh, for it to be dispatched. And obviously, you know, we have the sealing machines and various other things that get sealed, you know, 
uh, all the all the stuff gets sealed and stuff. And when the takeaway gets ready, we use boxes, uh, one time use boxes, and it's basically we have these that go in there. So customers, you know, if they were afraid of this box being touched so many times, this usually does the job. So you've got stuff that goes in here, gets packed, exit route, this guy then takes it from here, puts it out there for it to be dispatched. Uh, that's the evening operation, but uh, curry, curry kit gets uh, taken from there, the other way around, all the way around. So the circulation of here, you know, we didn't want to create a high traffic place. It's quite section, you know, we, we work in sections, you know, there's a grill section, there is a Indian foods section. So Indian street food. We only do very little Indian street food. We never even used to do much Indian street food, uh, but due to high demand because of your tuk-tuk, uh, after selling the your tuk-tuk, we realized, uh, you know, this is the place uh, you know where we can implement some of this stuff and that's why we did the curry kit now the spice kits coming called the spiceology uh, we we're hoping to work with about 100 restaurants to provide uh, a network to get it to the customers uh, at cost-effective way so we're hoping to see you soon uh, for uh, uh, when the lockdown is over and it allows us to reopen we're going to you know take take all the measurements that's necessary first to keep ourselves safe because if we are infected then we're going to infect you so that's that's first second you know there will be things in place you know sanitizers and you know the, 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 the we will have just before you go into the um, uh, toilets we will have something which says you know it is vacant and unvacant so there's too many people can't get through we will check, you know, on a regular basis. We will uh, we'll do our best. It's a difficult time. We don't, you know, uh, we, we don't want to open till late where customers are drinking and they, you know, they, they you know, to a stage where they will break rules themselves. Uh, we will try and, you know, do it in a most sociable uh, way possible. So, I hope you will uh, book with us and uh, we will see you shortly, hopefully. Uh, get booking, the booking lines are open, uh, our, our restaurant is expected to get really busy. We're very popular with uh, all the nurses and all the, locked, uh, all the key workers because we have been treating them uh, since we've started the takeaway operation. So thank you very much, take care. Um, Oli Bay. Uh, uh, basically, the video is uh, a lot, it's an informative video uh, Amin Ul Choudhury has done. Uh, for some reason, Amin Choudhury has, um, I think it's uh, frozen or is having a problem with the internet. Anyhow, um, restaurant sector obviously will need to go through a huge overhaul. They have to put screens, they have to wear uh, um, menus uh, that is uh, disposable. There's a lot of things, uh, uh, Olivier. Um, uh, well, do, well, food chefs uh, have to have a face mask and a uh, lot of things. So, what, what do you want to say about this one? We'll wait for um, Aminul Chaudhary to come back, so uh, then we'll talk about his restaurant. You see, uh, it is, is it, uh, we are facing a very much challenge, you know, and also risks. Mm -hmm. But uh, still, you have to take a risk. But uh, there is a risk of, you know, element that how much you risk we can take? Uh, you know? Only by accent. Aminul by you're okay. Can, can you hear me, Aminul by? I can hear you, but can we you hear you. me? Yeah, yeah, we lost you for yes. a bit, but yeah. Yeah, um, yeah sorry, Only by, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, Aminul, uh, one, I have uh, listened what he said. I don't know what the capacity he had and how, how many staff. And you, all the you have already told him that. Do you have any risk uh, management? How? Uh, risks they have or how much, uh, how long he can survive, you know, costing everything. Uh, but I have, uh, like my uh, several business we have in here and other side uh, in uh, London and USA. But I can see this is a restaurant industry is a very difficult uh, for one and two years unless you have a COVID is not find any solution. 
the uh, the way they have been putting uh, the uh, law is it difficult to uh, follow and also risk uh, to customer also the staff and the owners that is very difficult uh, even you were so much careful but still i feel they are very risky like a you know, hospital you know when you go to the patient or doctors is a very risky uh, uh, so i uh, still uh, we are we want to open our business but uh, still we are working on it uh, how to find the solution but i don't want to open my business unless i feel that i i can survive if i don't sure. want to survive i don't take that risk you know uh, that sure. is my important you know issue sure. no problem thank you uh, oliver uh, i mean why uh, thank you you're back again so basically the video is very very uh, informative uh, how it is so it is in a way that the risk assessment you already done it but obviously you have to put it to the uh, uh, paperwork isn't it i mean write it down that's all because the way you have described uh, the restaurant's uh, setting the kitchen how the portion did the risk assessment is done this is the risk assessment isn't it it is uh, but uh, you know before i open up you know i've got some english staff and various others that will join me and uh, I rather get somebody professional you know for me sure. you know my restaurant means a lot to me because I worked so hard for this uh, you know and I've, I've got a really great takeaway operation you know which which could potentially go on supermarket one day but uh, that's why I wouldn't jeopardize uh, because if they don't listen to me you know they'll listen to somebody that I bring in so for me you know I don't mind spending that money but for others it's very simple but I've just shown you if you can you know comply with that and uh, you know use your uh, common sense most of the time i I'm, i think you know i, I think we, we can control you know control this to an extent um but uh, you know every, every businessman is different you know they operate differently and uh, you know for me for me this coronavirus seriously uh, i know we're facing we're going to face recession but i see recession as an opportunity because i never stop thinking and i like to innovate and soon as the coronavirus came i came up with some ide- great ideas and uh, i'm doing a lot more business uh, than what i used to do in my restaurant just with one curry kit mm-hmm. so you know, i see it as an opportunity so we shouldn't we shouldn't you know do calcul- you know w- we should do calculation but then same time we should also diversify and adapt and uh, you know uh, and not bury our head in the sand because you know everyone is going through a hard time so we can find out you know if everyone is walking and they used to run before now we got to run and if they mm-hmm. if they catch up with you then you got to sprint and you got to find a way which way you're going to sprint you got to find those roads that you're going to sprint in sure can i ask okay. some question to aminul sure sure yes you see uh, because the at present you have already adjusted but when everybody coming like all of the takeaway all of the restaurant industry coming to the market you find your customer is less than before okay uh, you said you are going to reduce your menu you cannot reduce the staff yeah. wages you cannot reduce your you know what you call buying product like chicken meat all gone up everything is gone up you are all of the currents everything is gone up so that is the another risk we have we are facing uh because when we last uh, four five years you know, our restaurant industry has gone down because shortage of staff and so many things a lot of business is closing down not only uh, this uh, issue uh then uh, still we are uh, facing uh, professional staff you know even the staff who are there just like they survive they are not really creativity like you have doing a creative yourself you know uh, limitation and you are trying to do because i know you are more successful in the takeaway when you want to do both side restaurant and takeaway then it will be difficult like your chef to control everything for given the highest quality of the presentation and food it will be very difficult in some way it will be difficult so either you have to take one side or you have to take other side but i see that you are making most successful your takeaway because the your clientele already there are your nurses and other people but one is uh, we are coming everybody together all of the business i can see about 20 30% business would not be available in this time 
they will not become they cannot survive so uh, you're saying that uh, there will be about 20 30 percent uh, restaurant will not survive this uh, uh, pandemic yes they're already gone no i mean before that before this pandemic came along uh, uh Oliver, uh, obviously there was issues about staff and everything at this moment this is not the case because obviously as uh, uh Aminul was describing his uh, restaurant there'll be uh, less staff because according to the guidance that yes. minimal contact with the customer uh, uh, where possible. Uh, so that's how uh, when he was describing I mean all that uh, section wise uh, uh, there will be two people upstairs and there's one people downstairs because of three sections and uh, uh, that means less people in the restaurant. So that's not the main issue but main issue is uh, surviving the current uh, uh, situation I mean going back again because the restaurants are closed so it will be really really difficult for some restaurants to come back yes. isn't it? Yes. like a lot of other uh, uh, places, restaurants, a lot, lot of other businesses. It will be really hard, especially our uh, 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 restaurant sector. Even I can tell you in practicality, a lot of uh, staff would not be able to come. This risk, they don't want to work. I can see a lot of my staff. I have I have working about seven or eight restaurants. I have a staff, already half of the staff. They are gone different way. They are no longer want to work, you know. So you are saying that it will be a lot of staff would not be able to and they don't want to come to work in the restaurant because they feel the risk, you know. Uh, so there will be another difficult we'll face. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, that's fine. So um, uh, obviously uh, after the risk assessment is done, uh, then uh, the screening the restaurant, obviously you're going to have a serious meeting with your staff and everything. Give them because we have to educate them as well with the new laws that has come in. Uh, Amino? Yes, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think, you know, every time, you know, uh, we try to we, we try to cook corners, we, we don't we don't go far, you know, and uh, this is the time where if you can survive and comply with all the rules and regulation, then you are coming out as someone who is strong and deserves to be in business. And the ones that don't, you know, uh, if they if they fall behind and they have to close, Sadly, you know, it, they just not worked hard enough for our industry yeah, because this is the time where I work from six in the morning all the way till four at night every day. Uh, I mean, so if I don't succeed, you know, uh, and if, if others work hard like me and they succeed, good, good for them. But the ones that are sitting there and thinking that they can just come into, uh, you know, give Indian restaurant bad names is it, also no good. Mm -hmm. So we to all reflect. You know, this has got to stop, you know, uh, if we are treating our customers bad and not complying with rules and regulations and trying to open and this and that, we need to stop. You know, we, we Indian restaurant have, you know, been here for long enough now to able to comply with rules and regulation, you know, and, and, and go forward and create something special so that we can compete with the uh, likes of Brazilian restaurants that are doing 60 grand a week, you know, so these kind of. I mean, there are some good restaurants, don't get me wrong, and there, there's some really bad restaurants. And, uh, you know, this coronavirus might just take all the strong ones and make them winner. And the others, they might have to just work for the winners, you know. So, so it's, you know, look, it, whatever, whatever happens, it will happen for the best, I think. Yeah, um, uh, hundred percent. As the as as we have done programs like survival of the fittest. I mean, whoever is ready, whoever is thinking ahead, uh, obviously they will be surviving uh, at this moment. Can I um, add, uh, um, uh, Aminul, uh, the, because he's he, he's the captain of the ship. Okay, because mm -hmm. every business you have to be someone dedicated. So Aminul will have confidence and he can manage it. But a lot of our business, you know, like when you work, like. 20, 30 years back, we have been continuously working, you know, given all of the time. Nowadays, you know, all of the bosses, younger generation, they sit ideals and they feel everything will be gone. So they have to work hard now. The people who are managing, they have to take a full responsibility. They cannot rely on somebody else. If they believe they want to do, they cannot do half-minded. They have to come, like Aminul, they have to come to the field and they have to give everything they can. Otherwise, not good to become in business. No, uh, I totally understand. I mean, basically, um, obviously, the time uh, we are going through, um, and we have to learn from uh, a lot of. Uh, we have to learn from the things that we've done in the past, mistakes and everything. Yes. I'm sure there are a lot of restaurants. Not a lot, of, most of the restaurants will comply to the 
uh, current uh, uh, legislation, what the government has put in for the COVID-19. Uh, otherwise, it, it will be a, a problem or a disaster for them. Uh, hence, uh, I, I would say that uh, people will follow the guidelines, uh, which we have uh, actually uh, talked about last week in details. And also, it's on uh, our uh, um, uh, website, www.thecauk.org. Anyhow, uh, going forward, um, uh, Oliver, I want to come to you. Going forward, I mean, uh, this is another thing. I mean, we, we did discuss uh, uh, um, about it before as well. But I want to know from you that how can we put the confidence uh, uh, to the customers, our customers, that we are complying with the res uh, uh, legislation and we are safe, clean. You can come into the restaurant. That is uh, because every uh, restaurant they have their uh, communication with their customer relationships. Okay, they can go uh, through. They have to. They have to make a plan that this is what they, they are doing. What is their vision? What is the present situation? What is the compliance they have already followed? They have to also advise to the customer what they what they are expecting when come to the restaurant. So this is the thing have to be you know given confidence to the customers. You know very important. Because this is not like this, you know, if you will come and you have everything has to be uh, some way communication with the customers, you know, it's not like your tourist. You can, your your website has to be mentioned, your timing, what you are going to do. You, have, you cannot do like a big menu. You have to shortcut, you know, your menu, which one is not like a, a before 100 dishes or 50, 80 dishes. So you have to some way you have to compromise that area as well. You have to make a very hygiene, everything. Uh, you have to do a lot of fully presentation of the things. If when you are cooking, your utensility, there is already another very important, like a chef and staff, uh, how to handling, like your kitchen partner, including your chef. So they, they have to maintain the distance as well, how to handle it themselves, how to clean, even front, your waiters. They have to, before they start, they have to train, a lot of training, you know, they have to do a lot of training, even two weeks, three weeks, continuous on training without customers, you know. Uh, and then they have to put uh, forward all of the details to the customers, you know, uh, uh, or leaflet. They have to submit at the household and any other hotel or other industries. Um, uh, that, that's right. Uh, but obviously, um, we will do all that, but we have to let the customer know that we are doing that. Yes. So should, uh, uh, shouldn't we sort of like uh, uh, do what we are doing um, to follow the guidelines, I think we, we need to use the website more, the online uh, uh, portal to tell the customers that this is what we are doing. And we are complying with the laws and everything. Obviously, this will help because obviously uh, nowadays everybody looks at the uh, website and everything before coming to the restaurant and putting something on the website to say that this is what we're doing. Um, even going uh, uh, as putting your risk assessment uh, on your Facebook page. I, I don't know. What do you want to say? I mean, along that. Well, you know, I think, you know, uh, brother, there's a lot of signs you could buy, you know, and you can put, scatter them everywhere in the restaurant. You can train your staff. You know, I think customers like it, you know, when they see signs of, you know, saying do not enter this way or, you know, yes. or, 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 you know, go through this way or that way. You know, when there is, when they see an organized team and confident team and you got things in place, you know, uh, they get, you know, they'll and they'll go and tell others and obviously you know uh first when you when you've done your risk assessment you obviously you're going to shout about the fact that you've done risk assessment and you you know and you've got everything covered uh on your marketing materials because you want to get them in but yes, that's right. again you know we don't have to lie to them when when we tell them we're going to do something when they come here make sure it's there in place you know mm -hmm. So also, uh, also that you have to restrict your timing because you cannot have a like a, uh, midnight to midnight, you know, you have to timing, you know, you, have, you cannot go like a long hours nowadays. So, you, have to, you know, you have to be restricted your timing. That's why your staff can be accommodated, they feel comfortable. Customer also knows exactly what, they can, what time they come because you are not ex expecting crowd at your outside. So, mm -hmm. uh, what about the booking just, just, come? Yes, sure. Oh, yeah, Th this, this, uh, I mean, we can't hear you, I mean, no? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. What I was going to say, uh, just one thing that we did, you know, the other day we sat down between uh, uh, all the chefs and uh, 
uh, and the manager. And basically, we said we're not going to have a menu. We're going to just do a. We're just going to do Indian street food taster menu, which is a vegetarian one and a non-vegetarian one, and then world barbecue taster yeah. menu. We're going to give them loads of food. You know, uh, we're going to we're going to control it. We're not going to let them control it. You know, so as mm-hmm. soon as they come in, they take a seat. They got option A or B or C. You know, and uh, that's it. And uh, that way we can be prepared in the kitchen. And when when things come, you know, it's it's like a, it's like a machine. You know, the kitchen becomes like a machine. You can get it out just like that. And uh, and obviously, seriously, I agree. I mean, I've always operated because you pay per hour. Because most of my staffs are English, and so I pay them per hour. So I always have. Even before, I've opened from five o'clock till nine o'clock. Now I'm thinking from six o'clock till about eight o'clock. And whatever business you're going to do, you're going to do in that time anyway. What's the point of hanging around? Right. You know, because it's a difficult time. So when you pay them per hour, you know, you, you're saving a lot of money. Uh, so you, you're talking about reduce, reduce, you know, reducing uh, seats, but you're reducing the staff, staff uh, you know, hours. Uh, so you, you don't pay people on a full-time wages. You, this is a time where you turn around and say, sorry, you have to work on a hourly rate. And sure. that way, your the biggest expense comes down, which is the wages. Sure, right. sure. Also, your gas, electricity, other things you save on less hours, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only thing can save there. Um, uh, on the government uh, uh, um, checklist for uh, business uh, opening as well, one of the things is that you have to notify your council that uh, you are opening. Yes. Uh, this is one of the first thing they said that you have to notify that you are opening. The second thing is that they say that if there is something, there's changing of uh, changes of hours, you have to let yes. them know as well. Yes. So this is something very important that all the businesses let their council right. know. Uh, uh, of the thing, uh, of the opening hours, and if there is any changes, because council is already given you the uh, opportunity for uh, rebating your uh, rates and other things. Also, they are yeah. involved, so you have to let them know that you are, when you are going to start, and everything details what you are going to do. Uh, this is important. We have to understand in between them and ourselves, business people. So sure. very important. We have to work together. Sure, sure. Um, uh, that's fine. This is this is the front part and the uh, legislation. But now I want to touch. Uh, I mean, all because uh, you were a chef and you know um, a very good one. Uh, you've just won uh, an award in 2019 as well. Um, food um, preparation area are clean and disinfected. Uh, you know, how often do you want? Uh, do you think that we should do it? Brother, you know I. I think uh, we, we can, we, you know, this one is something that we can, uh, either you can go really crazy or, or, or you do it, you know, for example, say, say, for example, every, every 40 minutes or every 30 minutes or something like that, you know, the whole surface. But, uh, you know, hand sanitizer and all that, I think that that's done on a, you know, you should do it more often as possible. Regular, regular. Uh, yeah, but uh, you see, you'll get orders in, it's, it's no point saying, you know, saying things that it's not, not going to be realistic to do. When you get orders in, you probably get 20, 30 customers' orders in. You've got to get them out. What are you going to do? You know, stop everything and move everything and start spraying everywhere? You, you know, that's not going to happen. So, yeah, if you look at it as a batch, you know, like I'm going to shift all these, you know, tables and then I'm going to stop and, you know, do it again and then start on it again and in, in batches. So different restaurants will have different approach on that, I think. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, uh, that's obviously, um, this is something that uh, the chef or the person who is responsible, he will be deciding, he will know when to do that. And obviously, where possible, do it more often, isn't it? Yes, but I'll tell you what I've done here that's quite clever, because what I do, I open at lunchtime. So I do all the meat cutting and everything at lunchtime. So there's two, two of them come in. And they work about four hours and they, they they work and there's no distraction and then the others come in so and then there's the delivery drivers that come in at lunchtime to you know take far distance uh, deliveries because we do delivery up to 30 miles away so uh, so we take it in a batch you know this is about 30 40 orders in one go we take it and we deliver because it's uh, it's quite you can do it anytime but 
the way we do it, we, we sort of like don't get everybody involved in one go. Uh, that's why, you know, sometime on a Saturday we have a little bit of problem and that's why we switch off sometime, uh, you know, the just because we don't want it to get too busy. Uh, but we, we would have made our money at daytime. But the thing is, uh, if you do it like that, then it, it, it's hard to control when you've got five, six staff because they're going to they're gonna break every rule as possible. So less people is better. Mm-hmm. So try and spread the you know, uh, prep work and things like that. And then obviously have everything in stations so that when it's busy time, you don't have to you know, cross each other. Everything sure. is there. Each second has his own. No problem. Anyway, um, yeah, um, I mean, we are uh, coming to an end very shortly. I want to talk to you about uh, the workforce management. What uh, I mean, we just touched on it that, you know, people come on individual times, let's say prep prep people come in the morning, um, uh, sorry, afternoon, then you open up in the evening, you get your chef and everything. Um, um, And reducing the staff off, that means you are following one of the guidelines that less contact with the customers less people contact with the customer. So um, what do you want to say on that, like managing your staff? You are talking shift work, okay? Yeah, so, that's right, you can yeah. you can do it, yeah. yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, you have to, every individual business, you know, like, a, uh, like my business is a bigger, 200 seat. So I am, uh, I cannot make a shift. I, I'll do more or less two shifts, you know, uh, because uh, I can manage a lot of my customers. Uh, but, you know, I mean, already mentioned that uh, the controlling, not only kitchen control, how of the overall is the management. You know, your management have to be plan. You know, if it is too busy, then you have to clean all of the hygienic, you have to work together. If it is your takeaway, your takeaway staff will not be related to each other. They have to be separate area. They come and pick up and, they you know, handling all of the things. So these are the things you have to be practicalized in all the management team between chef and manager and owners and together when they start. And there to see which day is busier, if it's busier, what will be next uh, thing they have to do is cleanliness or deliveries. You have cover, if it is come a lot of deliveries and then you have your less staff, very difficult to give in the delivery quicker, uh, then you will be struggling again. So this is a lot of uh, risk element of those things in practicality, you know, all of your business, running the business. So uh-huh. even we are talking less staff, it will be difficult uh, if it is your demand is more and staff is less, you know. So demand yeah. and you have to be fulfill the staff as well. Um, I'm reading a comment from Dr. Hasna Tussain, Olivai. Um, he's saying that uh, new planning, new dependency on IT, remote ordering is... Um, uh, uh, every aspect of our life now. So basically, what he's trying to say, the use of the IT system more uh, yes, yes. in the restaurant sector. Yeah, this is the hundred percent. We are already started. Every business have the IT sector. Your uh, website every every time you have to update it. Every, even every morning you go, you are mm-hmm. updated from your home. You have to update it. Your customer coming goes to Facebook or your reservation. There is no more uh, any more in telephone or anything other like. It. More or less, we have already started. For I think Aminul knows or you knows very well. More we go up, uh, up uh, the IT sector on you know, online services. Uh, you know, even your reservation is a better, and still you have to work on those, those areas. Now it's print print run is that doesn't work anymore. All are online services. Sure, sure. Um, sure, no problem. I mean, um, uh, st- keeping on the IT se- uh, section, is there, um, there are uh, talks about. Uh, um, individual uh, ordering online, I mean, uh, on the table. So basically when a customer comes in, they order their stuff on a pad or something like that. Um, this is something coming very shortly, hopefully. Um, yeah, are- yeah, no, it, it's coming and, uh, you know, it's, I, it's good. You know, it's, uh, it's efficient. I mean, I did it the idiot's way. I had a bottle here, you know, basically they turn that on and that's when they want service. If they don't, they switch it off. And then that way, you know, my staff, wasn't running to every table asking them, would you like more drinks, would you like this, would you like that. You know, they were, they were constantly working. So, you know, I, I've, I've done it the idiot's way, but it's, it's coming to a, a I've, I've got a, basically a tablet where we take order now and it goes straight to the kitchen so you don't have to walk to the kitchen yeah, to, yeah. with the bill. Uh, but, you know, eventually it's going to be an app and where if they come into your restaurant, they order and it goes straight to your, you know, the customer is doing the job rather than you personally. <laughs> yes. So yeah, that's, that's right. what the next. Not a doubt. Mm, that's good. Um, fine. Now, um, uh, 
uh, Dr. Ray, we're gonna we're coming to an end. So I want you to um, tell the viewers um, well, uh, just briefly that uh, after COVID uh, nineteen, um, obviously it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be hard, but we just need to hang in there and just follow the uh, uh, guidelines. Um, uh, what the government has said and move forward. I think. Uh, what do you want to say on this one? And uh, that is, you know, that rules is rules for the benefit of the people, everyone. Uh, so this is the this rules we must follow. We cannot say that somebody coming to see my rules. I have to I have to go more than rules. You know, it's common sense. You find something is hazard should not be uh, uh, negligence. We have to even rules is there. Sometimes find even without rules, so many things is going on is not right. We must have a more than 100% concentration for the safety of all everybody. This is the first thing. And second thing, that we have to be confident ourselves. We have to work hard. We have to be take fully responsibility, some management team, whatever the people come. And then you have to find all the time solution. We have to be find a solution all the time. So when you are, and you have to work teamwork, whatever the whole thing. There is no time left that somebody come uh, well, the, your restaurant is open at 12 o'clock and somebody come 12.30 or 1 o'clock. should not be happened. So everything has to be smoothly. Every, whatever the time given, you have to half an hour, 20 minutes, hour before. Everybody have to come. They have to be, uh, think everything is available. Uh, all your product, all of the staff and uh, everything. Uh, you must have seen the, all of the hygienic thing is available. Every, everything, even chef. He cannot say, I have no, nothing else. I have no more proper uh, gowns or this and that. Uh, so every, the owner who is running the organization, manager, he must take seriously and work together and make, I think they, they can su survive, you know, if they take this proper. Sure. Thank you, um, Oliver. Um, finally, uh, Amino, what do you want to say to the viewers that um, it will help uh, them to get the uh, you know, confidence back into them. Look, COVID-19, we are going to open hopefully very shortly, end of this month or beginning of next month. Um, to give uh, the viewer some confidence, what do you want to say? Well, I want to actually say, you know, uh, look, I'm, I'm, I wasn't a wealthy businessman or anything like that. Uh, and I saw this as an opportunity, and I thought to myself, I'm going to do this for my daughter, I'm, I'm going to do this for my family, I'm, I want to be there, you know, and uh, I'm not going to let anything stop me. So uh, this is the time where I said, right, I'm not, I'm, I'm, this is the time when everyone's sleeping, I'm, I'm going to get up early. So, you know, go sleep early, get up early, you'll feel good. You know, make yourself feel good first, and then, you know, look at other, what others are doing, how they're diversifying, and, you know, suddenly you'll find something that you, you visualize and you'll have a vision, and then you're believing in your vision and when you believe in your vision trust me your body wakes up and you are a, you, you are dreaming with your eyes open you're a dangerous man you know it doesn't matter if somebody's got a million pounds and he's got a restaurant you know right next to you he can't beat you because now it's not about having money it's about idea based and you know so get up there this is your opportunity if you ain't got money and you're struggling you know what this is the time this is the time where you can say to the big boys come come i'll take you on with ideas you know and and that's the time and you get a buzz out of it Trust me, uh, you get a buzz out of it. I got, I got big, big restaurants right next to me. They're all closed, uh, you know, because they bend their head in the sand. Uh, they don't want to open. Some of them are closing for good. But, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, Allah gave me some uh, strength. And, 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 and that's why I'm saying to everybody, you know, do not see any bad thing. You know, I do not see this as the end of world. It's not. You know, every opportunity is a, every recession is an opportunity. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a massive recession. So you're going to if you if you find that one thing, you'll make it very big. Sure. Uh, so this is your opportunity, basically. Uh, so yeah, you know, be confident. You know, this is, you are a businessman. You're not a uh, if you're a businessman, you are a, you should be a visionary human being. You see the unseen. You know, when you close your eyes, and that should be your roadmap. Sure. Thank you, um, Oliver. It's always a pleasure to see you. Uh, Amir Choudhury, thank you very much for the uh, uh, the video, helpful video, and your uh, constructive uh, words. Um, I want to say to the viewers that uh, look, um, it's it's not far away. Uh, start your uh, planning now. Um, have the confidence. Coronavirus uh, is 
a blessing in disguise take it this way and you know move forward i'm sure uh, the business uh, will be booming soon it's an industry that has been running for so long and i'm sure our food is something that the british people adores thank you very much viewers and we'll see you next week good night thank, thank you everyone and to you, you. and welcome